It's beautiful, isn't it? However, unfortunately, here in Ukraine, many of the Soviet mosaics have either been torn down or just neglected and left to fall into disrepair. And so I want to take you guys on an adventure with me around this giant nation in search of some of the ones that still remain. So we're now going to go to the railway station and begin our journey on the hunt for some Soviet Ukrainian mosaics. Join me. This is where the Babushkas get their nighties. All right, let's jump on the metro and get to the railway station. Good day. Good day. How does this work? Ah, понял. Спасибо. We just missed our train, but it doesn't matter because look what we have here. Some beautiful yellow Soviet tiles. So Soviet. And a lovely Soviet bench. I think this journey across Ukraine is going to be rather Soviet. Let's hope so. Guys, check it out. The mighty Dnieper River, the carrier of so much of Europe's great history along these waterways. Check it. Guys, check out this mega, mega concourse here of Kiev Central Railway Station. You've got the massive old chandeliers. And here, above the columns, you've got different cities. You've got Lviv and Chernigov, Odessa. Wow. Amazing architecture that the Soviets built. Well, probably German prisoners of war, to be fair. But anyway, yeah. Wow, the scale of this thing is amazing. Very important for a long train journey is to buy some food. And look here what we got. We got some lovely kolbasa and bread. Mm-mm-mm. Они свежие? Да, дайте две, пожалуйста. You can even buy vodka here. By the shot. Well, it seems that that's not actually our railway station. Apparently, we're going to this like little railway station over here because the train we're taking is called an Elektrichka, which is the most basic train you can take. So I've got eight hours to the town of Rivna on a flipping Elektrichka. Don't think it's going to be very comfortable, but we'll um, we'll check it out. Let's see. Wow, what an adventure in the Ukraine. Hello. Where are you going? And this is a Ukrainian girl going somewhere or arriving from somewhere. I don't speak English. Ah, oh, what are? Как жал? Очень приятно. The Rivna train. The Rivna train is here. Let's go mosaic hunting. Are you ready? Check it out. What a beauty. I just met a very nice Ukrainian guy and he said to me, is this your first time on an Elektrichka? And I said, yes. And he said, good luck, mate. <laughs> You're going to need it. <laughs> I think we'll be okay. Is there a toilet on the Elektrichka? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, there's a toilet. Thank God. Eight hours without a toilet would be difficult. Well, all right, the um, eight-hour Elektrichka journey to Rivna has begun. Whoa. 
Let's do this. Bye bye, Kiev. When the Soviet Union collapsed back in 91, I remember that there was a lot of news stories about the Ukraine. And journalists were predicting that Ukraine would go on to be the most successful of the former Soviet states. It's positioned in Europe, it had a huge industrial base built up from the Soviet times, it has great farmland, it fed the Soviet Union pretty much in Ukraine. And so people expected a lot from this republic. And so it's going to be interesting on this journey to travel around and to see how it's turned out for Ukraine, see how people are living outside of Kiev in the smaller towns and provinces. about three hours into our journey in a town called Kazatin. Seems a lot of people are getting off here. Not many people are going to do the masochistic eight hours all the way to Rivna. Just me. There's a lady selling something from a bicycle. Let's see what she's got. Oi, Jarka. We bought ourselves some whatever these are for the journey. Hopefully it's better than that crusty old bloody Kolbasar and bread that I bought in Kiev railway station. And here's our lovely train. Just another five hours to go to Rivna. Let's try the um, food from this station. It's actually quite nice. I like it, whatever it is. Mm. The Anglia Ukraina plus Drusba. Nadeus. А как это были здесь тогда, когда было при СССР? Все работали? Все работало. Все работало при СССР. Да. Все работало. И деньги платили, колхозы работали, колхозы работали. Колхозы завалили, потом заводы и прочее, прочее. И нас валят тоже. Но мы не сдадимся, мы не завалимся. Нас тоже. Скажи, Фредди. <laughs> Our friend has an accordion underneath, but he's afraid to play it because he thinks he might get kicked off the train. We're trying to convince him to have an accordion song on the electric <laughs> Hopefully we can have a little sing song on the um, electric to Rivna. <laughs> Let's go. 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 Let's go.
Дружба между Украиной и Англией. Well, it's pitch black outside, as you can see. It's now 7.30 at night. We're about half an hour from our destination of Rivna, our first night stop. It's been, a, um, it's been an interesting journey. Met some interesting, very open, friendly people here in the Ukraine. And I think we can have a good time on this journey. I've got a lot of hope for it. So, um, yeah, let's get to Rivna, get to a hotel, because tomorrow morning we're going to wake up early and get on with the mosaic hunting. Exciting times ahead for us. Спасибо вам большое. Было очень интересно. Спасибо. До свидания. До свидания. Вау, мы приехали в историческую ривну. Посмотрите. Какое место. Есть старый косак, мэм. What a wonderful railway station. Let's have a quick look in the waiting room. Wow, I like Rivna already. How awesome is Rivna railway station? All right, anyway, we're now going to go and look for our hotel. Wow, what an awesome city. Flipping heck, it's basically a lake. Bloody hell. Sort out your pavements, Rivna. Absolute nightmare. Traveling in the provinces, in trainers. Man, whoa, it's not the way to go. You need Wellington boots in the provinces of Ukraine. If you don't want to get trench foot, that is. Let's check out the Hotel Mia. Oh, well, if you like red velvet curtains and bedding, you're going to love the Hotel Mia. Well, that's the end of the first day, but tomorrow is when the mosaic hunt really begins. I've chosen about five around the country, here in the west, in the south and in the east. So we're going to go and have a look at some different ones. Um, yeah, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Anyway, until tomorrow. Good night from Rivna. Guys, good morning from, well, a chilly Rivna. Let's put it that way. It's time to begin looking at some mosaics. So um, I found one on Google Images in the town of Rivna, and um, I think it's up there somewhere. So um, let's go and look for our first mosaic. Let's do it. Beautiful Rivna, check it out. And the Rivnians, look at them, so sweet. Look at this, what's your babushka doing right now? I bet she's at home with her feet up watching TV. Not the babushkas of Ukraine, the poor buggers. The Babushkas of Ukraine are out here cleaning the streets in the morning when it's bloody cold. Look. It's a tough life in the Ukrainian provinces. Whoa! We found it. That was easy. It's around the corner from a bloody hotel. Check it out. Check it out, the big old Soviet mosaic. It says Rovna. Rovna is what Rivna used to be called before they changed it after independence to Ukrainianize the name. It says 1283 to 1983, a big old Soviet mosaic. Just think, the history of not just Rovna, 700 years, but of this land, this Ukrainian land. The history that this country has seen from the Scythians, from the Mongol invasion, 
and then changing hands between Poles and Russian empires and Swedish empires and then the Soviets. The sadness that came to this land, the Holodmor, the hunger, when millions of people were starved by Stalin. The German invasion, when the Jews, all of this region, were murdered by the Nazis. And now independence, an independent Ukraine. And look at it, look at the details. Wow, as the colours are a little bit faded. And up on the very, very top is a hammer and sickle. But the hammer and sickle up there has been chiselled away a little bit because with the decommunisation laws in the Ukraine, you can no longer display communist symbols here in the country. So the old hammer and sickle right up at the very top has been chiselled away somewhat. But still, it still remains here after all these years. Made in 1983. Wow, that was a different time. All right, we now need to somehow get to a bus station and find a bus to our next city, Ternopil, to continue the mosaic hunt. Let's do it. That's no doubt going on a grave of a babushka who tripped on the bloody pavements of Rivna. Check him out. I mean, does the local mayor just not give a shit about the citizens or what? Bloody hell. Asterogna. Ah, the locals are used to it. <laughs> they don't care. It's just a fussy Brit <laughs> that thinks there's something wrong with this. Right, here's the old bus station, or new bus station. You just need to find a bus to Rivna. No, where are we going? Tornopil. God, I'm terrible with names. Tornopil. Let's go and see if there's a bus today. Excuse me, please. How does the next one go to Tornopil? Еще раз, пожалуйста, медленно. 12. А сейчас сколько? Давайте билет, пожалуйста. Спасибо. Right, we have a ticket. After two hours to Ternopil. Two hours to kill in Sunny Rivna. What are we going to do? Well, you never know what you're going to find when you've got two hours to kill in Rivna. Well, look what I found. It's a flipping Soviet mosaic, rotting away here in the suburbs of the town. And look how nice it is. Two beautiful Ukrainian women in traditional Ukrainian dress, holding a loaf of bread, the traditional welcome in this part of the world. It's beautiful. And it represents to me, not just the beauty of these two Ukrainian women, but Ukrainian people in general who despite the hardships of life in towns like Rivna, where the average wage is $200 a month. Think about that. They've managed to retain their warmth and their jolliness and their openness, their friendliness. Not sure I could do that. So yeah, so this mosaic represents the Ukrainian people, a bunch of legends, men and women. Slava Ukraina. Something funny just happened that made me chuckle. As I was doing my little piece in front of the camera at the last mosaic, a guy went past on the bus and he just went, like, you're a, you're a nutter. Because <laughs> I was talking to a camera. Jesus. It's not easy being a vlogger, being ridiculed by the Rivnians. Let's get back to the bus station. Whoa, crikey. Well, we're back at old Rivna bus station, waiting for our bus to turn the peel. Which one of these beauties is it gonna be? Oh, the pink and white one, I like that. Beautiful choices. Let's see. And there's a lady shouting for no reason. Our bus is here to, um, to Nopil. What a beauty. Check it out. 
Yeah, the Tenopolians. Tenopolians? Don't know what you call them. Wow. I think I need a stiff drink. After spending the last four hours driving through towns and villages that consisted of nothing but crumbling Soviet built architecture and infrastructure. Oof. I've got to ask myself what have the successive Ukrainian governments done for the people here in the provinces? Because from what I can see, it's fuck all. And painting things in patriotic blue and yellow colours, well that's not enough. Unbelievable. Anyway, I can't let myself get too bloody depressed. We've got to continue with the great mosaic hunt. Let's do it. Let's try and find the next one, if we can. Я не знаю, это известный мозаик на улице в ваш город. Старый советский мозаик, не знаете? Данила Галицкого 2. Вау, Жигули. Осторожно. Bloody hell. I'm not sure anyone knows where this bloody if the taxi driver, if a taxi driver doesn't know where it is. I don't think anyone's going to. Let's see if we can find it. Приключение будет. Почему они не ремонтировали дороги? Потому что у них крадут деньги. А, понял. Кто? Политик? Кто? Политика? Да, 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 политика. Да. да, блин. Это проблема в Украине. Да, да, проблема. Тут, тут уже давно хорошо бы люди жили. И крадут, и все. Как они не стыдно? Ну, вот, не стыдаются. Где наш мозаик советский? We are Soviet mosaic hunting in the provinces, in a larder. What an adventure. Oh, oh, I see! I see my zik! Yeah, da, 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 da! Serioja, I see! Смотрите. Ну я ж кажу, що де тут. О, ви все знаєте. Дякую. Вау. I got so excited when I saw the Soviet mosaic that I've only ever seen on Google images and now it's almost in front of me. Let's go and check it out and talk about it. I've left my bag in the car. Hope you don't drive off with my bag. Wow, check it out. Hey, where are you going? Where's he going with my bag? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I've got all my money, my passport, everything's in the bag. I'm sure he's okay. Guys, look how beautiful it is, this mosaic that we found. It's even beautiful than it is on Google, Google Images. It's not been in any way destroyed. The colours are still bright. Wow. And, and why did I choose this one? Of all the mosaics in the country, why did I choose this as one of the five we're going to visit? That's because it tells the story of a particular piece of Ukrainian history, and that is the end of the Second World War. Here we have the soldiers, they're returning to the village, being led into the village by their children, two little kids. And here on the right, we have the women of the village, the grandmothers, the sisters, the aunties that they left behind when they went to the front, and now they're greeting them back into the village with the bread, the traditional greeting here in Ukraine. Wow, it's beautiful. Just think, just think what the Ukrainians went through during the Second World War. Operation Barbarossa rolled through here. Then of course the Soviet army on their way to Berlin. Terrible, terrible things were done to the Ukrainian people. But here it tells of a happier time when the war was over. You can see here the three flowers that are growing again in the village, signifying rebirth. The rebirth of Ukraine, the Soviet Union after the Second World War. Wow. And here, here I want to show you something quickly, something you don't often see 
On a mosaic, a Soviet one, is the name of the person and the date when he created it. Mr. or Mrs. Shinoga created this from 77 to 79, this huge, beautiful mosaic. Check it out. Wow. This is beautiful. I'm so glad that I've come to see it in the flesh and to see the history of Ukraine. Спасибо вам большое. Было интересно. Да? Да, интересно очень. История из Украины про война. Красивый очень. Well, there's a bloody huge MiG on the end of a plinth over there. Check it out. Welcome to the provinces. That's epic. But we are now off to Odessa. Odessa Mama. Let's go for it. Not in the Jaguli. We're going to the train station. Так весь день работаю, вечером в село, в деревню. Следующий день снова приезжаю, работаю в деревню вечер. И так, так живу, а что делать? А что у вас есть в ваш село? Что-то есть? Да, что там есть? Ничего дома. Только дома? Кокос да. или что-то? Нема, нема ничего зара. Все, все уничтожили. Нема ни заводы, ничего нема. Раньше хоть я колхозы были, то были корови, и мясо, и молоко, и сыр, и сметана, а зараз ничего не было. Ого, еще не боксал. Да. О, большой, красивый. Сейчас сделали тут хорошо. Да? Да. О, нормально. Хорошо. Тут да, было да, плохо, да. сейчас сделали хорошо. Это хорошо. Супер товарищ, спасибо вам большое. Спасибо за помочь и все. Что? Сколько вам? Ну я знаю, что ринью до штаба да хорошо. Это мало, что сто. Мало, да? Да, я думаю, что да. Что 200 за мной. Нормально, нормально. Потому что вы мне дождал, вы искал. Да? Спасибо большое, спасибо. Хорошо. И, и вам спасибо. Хорошо, хорошо. Это для меня деньги. Хорошо, я рад это слышать. Удачи вам, удачи. Все, сейчас, сейчас здорово. Спасибо. До свидания. До свидания. Oh, what a lovely guy in his blue larder. There he goes. Right then, but we've got to look for a, a way out of town and try and get to Odessa. Don't know when there's a train, but let's find out. Is there a train to Odessa? Odessa, Odessa, oh, lots of options. See if they got some tickets. Nah. Super. Well, we have a ticket, uh, but it's not until midnight tonight down to Odessa. So I've got about eight hours to kill in Ternopil. Well, it's about half past 11. So about half an hour to go until my train gets here. You may be thinking, why didn't I show you what I did for the last seven and a half hours? And that's because I did nothing apart from sit in a chair, have a cup of coffee, have a beer in town, a bit of pizza, nothing of any interest. And I'm cold and freezing and I want to get on my train, which hopefully will be here soon. I'm going to ride down overnight to Odessa. Спасибо вам большое. Ренедеса. Let's 
go and look for a mosaic. Wow, think how many people have walked out of that railway station to pass. The Soviet stars and celebrities, cosmonauts, everyone wanted to come down to Odessa. And we're here. Behind me is a statue of the Tsarina Catherine the Great, a woman that rumours say used to like to get it on with thoroughbred horses. Now I don't know if that's true or not, but what I do know is that in 1794 she deemed that a city should be built here on the shores of the Black Sea and they were to call it Odessa. Dirty bugger. Well, as we head now to the mosaic I want to show you here in Odessa, we're passing through a region, a famous region of the city called Moldavanka. A word that every Soviet citizen knew because Moldavanka was the capital of the Jewish mafia in the Soviet Union. They controlled the port and hence all the smuggling routes in and out and the contraband that came in and out of the country. Moldavanka. Now, of course, it's a little bit safer, I think, than back in those days. No dodgy bubbishkas around to beat me up, I don't think. You never know, though. Be on your guard always in Moldavanka. Moldavanka? Moldavanka? Yeah, I love Mafia, Yevreyski Mafia. Ah. <laughs> Guys, look where we've come to. This is the the mosaic I wanted to show you here in Odessa. It's not a very impressive one. It's only a little Soviet mosaic up there of a little sailing boat on the gentle waves. Not hugely impressive like the monumental ones we've seen before, but it represents the Black Sea. The Black Sea, the ancient waterway that carried the Phoenicians, the Venetians, the Greeks, the Romans. Everyone traded on the Black Sea and that's what gave the city of Odessa its reason for being. That's why it was built here. A warm weathered port so that the Russian Empire could import its goods year round and send out its navy when it needed to. Wow, look at it. How awesome, how sweet. I'd love to have a Soviet mosaic on the side of my Khrushchevka. Lucky buggers that live here. 